All right, AFC West, which this is a fun one because, you know, we'll start with a team like the Chargers who have a million needs and a coach that's changing, you know, really the philosophy of the way they play football. And Mark has a smile on his face because he's about to say something cheeky. And I feel like I already know what it's going to be, but. Jim Harbaugh likes running the football. He likes tight ends. He likes offensive linemen. He values the building the team, which is what he's trying to do in L.A., build the team from the front to the back, the interior to the outside. Uh, that's how we built Michigan. That's how we built Stanford. That's how we built the 49ers in those heydays in the NFL. It's what he wants to do. So Joe Alt is everybody's top offensive lineman prospect in this draft. You already have a quarterback like Justin Herbert. I could see them taking Joe Alt. I really, really could, and I don't think that Harbaugh would ever, ever even bat an eye about that. Um, the fun one is we're talking best fit. He loves J.J. McCarthy. Absolutely love this kid, and he has never even mumbled a bad word about this dude, and he confidently says he thinks he's the best quarterback in the draft, and he's not wavering on this opinion. He's been saying that when he was his coach. Now that he's not his coach, he's still saying it. Right. And – if they get a chance, you know, I'm not saying they take him with the with an early pick, but if for whatever reason JJ falls in this draft and the Chargers feel like they can climb back up there and get it, I, I could see him doing it, you know. And what if, like, you know, uh, let's just stick in this crazy fantasy that is not going to happen, which is JJ McCarthy replacing Justin Herbert? Like, could they trade basically a king's ransom away for Justin Herbert? Like, is that kind I mean, of you would the have idea? you would have to be so confident in JJ to do so that. but stupidly confident, which but do you, Jim Harbaugh might be. <laughs> is he is he not? You know, is he not that confident? So that that's some of the crazy stuff I'm thinking. Um, Absolutely insane stuff. Like like if we're being real here, like there's no yeah. Way. I, <laughs> so that's why I have it here. I, you know, obviously it's something people are going to talk about just because of their, you know, their background together at right. Ann Arbor. But dude, think about the, think about what you could get for Justin Herbert right now. Yeah. Um, I like to Fuaga, by the way, uh, as far as offensive line goes, just because he's the best running, uh, you know, uh, tackle. Yeah. What you could get for Justin Herbert though. I mean, that could be, Minnesota trading those two first round picks for him right then and there. And then you still have five and you could just freaking, you know, have your way all the way down the board in the first round. It'd be insane. Um, a receiver prospect that I kind of um, like for them um, is probably Ricky Pearsall, just because of the sure handedness. I think he'd be really successful with, you know, a guy like Herbert. Uh, throwing just absolute darts, yeah. um, you know, again, because they need a receiver, dude, they need a they, receiver, they need too. a receiver bad. And thankfully this is the draft where you can go second, third round and probably, you know, look yeah. for receivers. That maybe maybe, they, maybe they go out. get Roman Wilson. <laughs> right. I, okay. We should, we should just for fun, which by the way, you still owe an ACT that I just need to hold you accountable for sooner than later here, because like, what the hell Mark, it's been a year and a half. Gotta, gotta busy, pay your debt. busy man. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got to pay your debts, man. It's been in the banner for a while. We've just been ignoring. I've I've let it slide for a few weeks, but I'm getting tired of it. You you owe me. Um, but we should make a bet of if if and how many Michigan players are getting drafted by the Chargers <laughs> or uh, UFAs too is another potential one. I mean, I I honestly think he only drafts one guy. Maybe. Who I don't is. think he drafts. I don't know who it's going to be. I mean, right. it could be any of them. There's a there's a deep amount of Michigan guys that are draftable. And no matter what the team is, obviously Harbaugh's going to have bias. <laughs> you add in the Ravens draft picks. How many, how many Michigan guys do Harbaugh brothers draft combined? Yeah. Because now we're talking, because I think Baltimore could easily draft a few of these guys. Totally. Um, yeah, and there's a lot sure. of Michigan connect. There's a lot of Michigan connections on the Baltimore staff too. Right. Um, who's next? Casey. Um, uh, this is a fun one, but I also think would be a great fit. Um, actually Mark, Mark has 
is another fun one that would probably be a great fit. So I'll let you go first, Mark. Um, yeah, it's it's Xavier Worthy because same reasons we talked about with Miami, but you know, except especially with what's happening with Rasheed Rice, um, you know, you look at a player closest to like a Tyree Kill comparison, obviously just because of the flat out speed and ability to put fear in a defense ability to attack down the field. You have a quarterback who can throw the ball downfield as good as anybody we've ever seen. He doesn't really get to do that as much anymore because ever since the absence of Tyreek, it's everybody's just playing this two man coverage against him and not letting him have the cheap, easy ones. And so he's having to dink and duck his way all the way up the field and then make something happen in the red zone. I miss the explosive plays in Kansas city. I miss those big, long touchdowns. They're so and fun. What, Dude, I I miss that, and I really and I really think that Andy Reid wants to be able to have a toy that he can do that with again. And Xavier Worthy is that toy. He's he's that factor that you can bring in that's going to make everything else underneath easier. And it's also if you dare play him one on one, a super favorable matchup for Mahomes, who again, like I said, he throws that ball better than anybody. So give him a guy that can go do that. Yeah, for for me, similar concept, but slightly different way of getting there uh Jalen Polk who I think you know the guy that's not getting talked about because he's in the shadow of Roma Dunze very sure-handed fast big receiver um that uh Mahomes and you know for, like a legitimate vertical threat um yeah. you know so underrated, I, I think, dude so underrated because of, of Dunze yeah him and, Mc, him and McMillan too, him and right. McMillan don't get talked about because right. Dunze is getting stealing the show but those and McMillan's guys were, look, Getting like a third round, you know, uh, look too, probably. Yeah. So, I mean, Washington truly had an NFL receiving core um, right there. So, all right, Raiders, uh, who have a whole lot of problems to address. And once again, a, a changing of the guard. Um, Pierce is, is a pretty defensive minded guy. And so for me, I think like most likely to be successful. I mean, there's, there's really two ways you can look at this, edge rusher or cornerback. Uh, one guy that we haven't mentioned really at all um, is the number one corner, which is Terry and Arnold. Um, I, I think he could 100% be successful um, with the Raiders because one, their secondary is already not bad. Two, I think it's a good fit. And three, I think it's a realistic fit just based off of where the Raiders are picking. Could also look to address edge though. Um, and, you know, take your pick of the litter. Uh, probably best fit though, I'd say, you know, would probably be like a, a Jared verse, um, opposite of Max Crosby. I think would be the only reason I say no to edge is just because of Max Crosby and because already they've there. already invested in interior D line as well with, with Wilkins. And so, you know, um, I really do actually like that. I'm going to actually kind of switch my direction here. I, I like the Terry and Arnold, uh, pick that you said, you know, obviously it's a guy that most people have him up at the top of the board. You and I are not as high on him just in terms of how much we've talked about him, how much credit we've given him. But the guy's a stud, man. He's a stud. And if you want to go safe early on in the draft, um, especially at a position like that where you really can't afford to miss, like I think back to like when the Lions drafted Jeff Okuda third overall, like what a miss that was and how much that, that set us back, you know, because if a we would have hit yeah. that, if we would have made that pick correctly, like we would have gotten the right guy. If you're going to draft a defensive back, especially a corner that high, you better be damn sure that he's going to be your guy for a long time. I'm talking Jalen Ramsey, Deion so, Sanders. So sure. You know, yep. like you better be really sure. So that's the risk of it. But I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a ton of risk surrounding Arnold. I, I don't, I think he's, just, I think he's a sure bet safe pick. So, um, you know, I, I think that's a really good fit for them. Yeah. And then last one for this division. And then I think we, we have what two divisions left still. Um, Turned out to be a long episode. All good, though. Um, the Broncos, who are in a precarious situation because they don't really – they have a lot of needs. Uh, clearly, they're kind of hitting a reset button with Sean Payton at the helm. Um, they need a quarterback that, you know, they got rid of their, uh, you know, I guess number one wide receiver, and though actually I'd, I'd make an argument that Sutton's probably better. What are they going to do? at pick 12 and where are people like what kind of needs can they fill where people are going to be successful with them right away? Cause they really don't have time to waste. They can't afford to develop guys. They need Sean, Sean Payton's he wants to win now, dude. And he kind of has to win now that the pressure's That's on him. Saying. You know, but I, they don't th have a second round sound, draft pick. Like, yeah, <laughs> this might sound crazy, man, but, um, and the reason I'm going to say this is not necessarily just because I like this prospect. I like, I really like Spencer Rattler for this fit because of his arm talent, because of his ability to throw 
um, with multiple different arm angles, um, you know, slightly undersized, but he's mobile enough to protect himself and make plays down the field. Sean Payton is a, is a quarterback whisperer. He can make any one of these prospects a true NFL threat. Uh, a lot of people are saying Penix or Bo Nix. Um, I'm not as high on Bo Nix as some of these other as some of these other guys are. I'm, so, I'm not either, but I do think that there's merit to just getting like the guy with the most experience to play under Sean Payton and not be actually- Rattler's got Rattler's got some experience too. Don't you forget, you know? Um, and he's got a he's got an interesting story from college and playing at two different schools, getting beaten out by Caleb Williams, who's obviously going to be the number one pick in this draft and he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. And I think that he just lines up well with what Denver's going to try to do. Yeah. And then, so I'm, I'm taking the realistic fit route here too. They again, have a crazy number of areas that they need to beef up. Um, but a Malik Washington out of Virginia, who is just a, he's very undersized. He's like five, eight, but he's stocky and crazy athletic. Um, you know, maybe another, you know, you, he, you already kind of loves have, those guys. Uh, not only that, but you already kind of have like the, the size receiver in Sutton. I mean, what he's like six, four, six, five, yeah. he's freaking huge. So, okay. You know, get a little guy to, to go with that. Who's stocky and fast and gritty, um, you know, could solve some problems. And again, I mean, this is a, a third, fourth round. I mean, what consensus I'm looking at one twenty two. So, yeah. Late third, early fourth. Like he's going to be there for the Broncos if they want him. Uh, just just one receiver prospect that I think could be, you know, legit. Another one, too, we mentioned him before, Roman Wilson. I mean, you you know, you could potentially follow the third, could also be a good fit for for a Sean Payton-style offense. So, um, you know, I, I don't know how to describe what Sean Payton's offensive philosophy is other than just, like, you get, like, a group of weird gadget players together and then they all just start, you know, doing random shit that no one expects and it somehow turns into points. So uh, you saw it not work as soon as he left the Saints. 